I open the door and walk into that last rehearsal. The guys look to me for direction, but instead of me calling up one of the tunes from the set list, I take a deep breath and say, there's something I have to tell you. Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here. Wanted to share this story with you. I'm 20 years old, standing in an empty hallway, peering through the window of a classroom. I see three guys already in there. They're chatting, warming up, looking over their parts. These three guys are my bandmates, and we're about to have one more rehearsal before my senior recital at the New England Conservatory of Music. And I should be excited. I spent the last four years at music school practicing saxophone all day, playing in jam sessions at night, and studying with the best musicians in the world. But as I slip into this rehearsal room, my stomach turns. Not because the performance is only three days away, but because of what I've decided to tell the guys today. I've decided to tell them a secret, a shameful secret. A secret I haven't revealed to anyone else, except for Jerry. You see, a week earlier, I had my private lesson with this guy. <laughs> Percussionist Jerry Leak. Jerry works with players of all instruments to help improve their rhythm, time, and feel. So I sit down across from Jerry in his lesson room, and he asks me, how are your rehearsals going? I tell him, good. Then I pause and kind of look down into the side and say, honestly, I'm having a real issue with my time. You see, my band keeps playing all these complicated rhythms while I'm soloing, and I keep losing my place. Even saying this now, I, my face is getting all hot and I want to turn off the camera and scrap this video entirely. Having issues with time and rhythm might not sound like such a big deal, but as a 20-year-old kid studying jazz at one of the best music schools in the world, admitting to having trouble keeping the beat feels like playing in the NBA and confessing to the coach that you can't make layups in playoff games. Anyway, Jerry listens and nods, and I think back to all the other times I've tried to address this rhythm issue with past teachers. One teacher wanted me to play a pattern on the piano with my left hand while reading a book out loud in order to help turn my left hand on autopilot. Now this kind of hand independence exercise made sense in theory, but in practice, it felt like I was trying to learn how to juggle five balls before I could even juggle three. And I got other suggestions from other teachers over the years, but none of them made that much of a difference in my playing. And I didn't realize why until many years later, but I'll get to that in a minute. Back to Jerry. He knows my recital is in just a few days. There isn't enough time to fix my time issues. So he says, Jeff, why don't you just ask your band to tone it down and play more simply? Now, admitting my time issues to my teacher is one thing. The thought of putting this out in the open among my peers makes me want to crawl out of my skin, but I'm desperate. And at this point, the thought of feeling embarrassed and awkward in front of my three bandmates sounds a whole lot better than losing the beat in front of 60 people during my senior recital. So I open the door and walk into that last rehearsal. The guys look to me for direction, but instead of me calling up one of the tunes from the set list, I take a deep breath and say, listen guys, there's something I have to tell you. I'm having a hard time staying locked in the groove on these tunes, and I need you to help me out and just keep it real simple and straightforward while you're playing behind me. They nod and say, sure, no problem. And to a fly on the wall, I'm sure the whole thing seemed like no big deal, but I want to throw up. I'm thinking, these guys think I'm a loser now, that I can't hang, word's gonna get out, everybody's gonna know that I suck. This hair keeps falling in my face. <laughs> I was hoping to feel some kind of relief after getting this weight off my chest and, and sharing this with the guys. But as we play through the tunes and I hear the guys keeping their playing real simple behind me, all I can think is, Great job, Jeff. They're really dumbing it down for you. A few days later, I have my recital. All my family, friends, and teachers are seated in front of me in the performance hall. We play down the set, but I'm so in my head that even with my band playing with the kid gloves on, I, I feel like I'm, I'm one note away from falling completely off the rails. Anyway, we make it through the show, the crowd applauds, and I fake a smile to my family and friends the rest of the night. 15 years later, I look back on all this now and I realize my issue was never about being able to keep up with my bandmates. And it wasn't that I had some sort of rhythm deficiency. The real problem was I didn't trust myself. Like somebody driving a car that can't stay in their lane because they keep second guessing themselves and overcorrecting at the wheel. It's performance anxiety. Now, thankfully, it doesn't affect my playing as much as it used to. I've made a lot of progress over the years with exercises I've developed to help strengthen my time, like practicing with the metronome in weird, creative ways and working on rhythmic displacement. But it's important to note that practicing exercises and drills is not the same as live sparring. Here's what I mean. I used to train jujitsu, and the biggest difference between drilling techniques and live sparring is that live sparring is so much less predictable. 
You don't know what your opponent is going to do. There's this element of chaos. The same is true for playing with live musicians. Even if you work on the most complex metronome settings and rhythmic displacement exercises in the practice room, you can't account for the uncertainty that comes with playing with others. And if you don't practice with that uncertainty, if you don't practice with that chaos, how can you expect to be able to perform with it? I'll answer that question with one last story. I got an email a few months ago from this piano player in Greece named Antonis. He said he's developed this unique play along app that uses AI to generate backing tracks. I was kind of skeptical at first, especially since AI is such a buzzword these days. Plus I already have Band in a Box and iReal Pro and a huge collection of Jamie Abersold play alongs. But I gave Antonis' app a try just to see what it was all about. And I wrote him this email a few days later. I'm messing around with the practice mode now and I'm wishing I had this thing years ago. Why? Because it's the only backing track app I've ever used that integrates that element of chaos. You can tell the AI, you can tell the app to randomly incorporate polyrhythms and odd beat groupings into the rhythm section accompaniment. I'll show you what I mean. First of all, the app is called Genius Jam Tracks, and here's how I like to use it. First, I pick a tune from the library. Let's use like a jazz blues for this demo. Then I like to go into practice mode and select an option under one of these three tabs. Ratios has polyrhythms like two against three. Here's five against four. But let's try one of the more basic polyrhythms, two against three. So I really like how the top of each chorus is clearly defined, like measure one, beat one. There's no question where that is. And that that can help you find your footing if you've kind of lost your way through the, uh, the complex rhythm section figures that have happened throughout the chorus. Now, look, I want to be totally transparent with you and, and say that Genius Jam Tracks is sponsoring this video. But I've been recommending this app and will continue to recommend it either way, sponsorship or not, because it's just it's a must have. And it really is the, the tool I wish I had back then when I was having issues with my time. And I can't recommend it enough to you guys now. So if you wanna check it out, the link is in the description below. And before I sign off, I just wanna remind you that if you're struggling with something with your music, ask for help, put yourself out there. Don't let your pride get in the way of admitting when you're having difficulty. Pretending that everything's fine is not gonna make anything better. And I think that's true for music and in life. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.